Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Golden Hour Drip podcast. It is Friday. Thank the Lord. It has been the longest week of my life. I have just been so busy. It has been unreal. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Last weekend, I got like zero rest. This weekend, I am making a priority. I am getting so much rest. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to sleep in. And honestly, like I've been really craving to like cook something in the kitchen, you know, like make a little something. It's Easter weekend. So like maybe something Easter themed, maybe not. I keep seeing these like lamb cakes or um, the bunny cakes all around absolutely atrocious. I remember when I was, I don't know, in high school, my sisters and I made this like DIY bunny cake. It was disgusting. It was disastrous. It was so spooky. Okay. I still honestly have nightmares about it. I digress though. (laughs) Spooky bunny cake aside, it's Friday. I'm so happy you're here and I have some questions for the gals today. Thank you for everyone who submitted. If you would like to submit a question, you can either email me at goldenhourdrip at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram at goldenhourdrip. If you're watching on YouTube, you can comment down below. Um, And while you're at it, why don't you like, subscribe, uh, rate the podcast, all the things, wherever you're listening or watching from, I would so very appreciate it. So let's get into the questions. The first submission is, it's so early. Oh my gosh, where's my voice even going? What am I even reading? Apologies, okay? It's so easy for me to scroll on social media, but I clamp up when I try to create my own videos. How do I feel not so cringy? Listen, (laughs) I think we all struggle with this at one point or another. And I think, of course, like we all love scrolling. We all love watching the girlies and seeing what they're putting online, seeing what our favorite creators are doing and kind of just like following along with their lives, right? This is why we like TV shows, reality shows, um, you know, Instagram and YouTube, like all the social media platforms, right? That's why I like it. I I love to follow along. And I would be remiss if I wouldn't say that like there's sometimes where I don't feel the most confident or um, have the, I don't know, the notion to being seen like to put yourself out there because essentially if you are creating any sort of content, you're putting yourself out there. You are allowing it to be opened up for the world. Anybody to have an opinion, to comment, to, um, you know, thumbs down your video or whatever, when you are creating content and putting it out there for judgment, it can feel so nerve wracking. So, Essentially, like it's exciting to watch someone else because you're viewing it, right? If we go back to our like ancient brain, like the part of our brain that protects us and thinks that the mountain lion is gonna come and eat us, right? Um, If you think back to like that part of your brain, it's trying to protect you. And when we are just watching, we're still protected, right? We're not putting ourselves out there. We're not allowing ourselves to be criticized or anything of that nature. When we create, now we're putting ourselves in danger. Now someone can send it to their friends and be like, oh, she looks so dumb or her opinion is so stupid or I can't believe she's trying to do this, right? You are just open open up for conflict, open up for the struggle, open up for the mountain lion to come and see where you are, right? And so I think it's completely normal to feel like a sense of scared, (laughs) like you're scared to put yourself out there, you're scared to create content. And I would have to ask you, like, why do you wanna create in the first place? Why do you wanna put any sort of content out there? Why do you want to create a video? Why do you want to create that Instagram or Facebook post? Like what is driving you to put this piece of content out for the world and let that why be the strength to actually like press post, to 
create that piece of content and put it out in the world, you have to rely on your why. Why are you doing this? What is it going to get you? And have the reward be greater than the risk. I know the fastest thing that is going to get my butt moving, you know, light a fire under my butt, is for the reward to be much greater than the risk. Or if you think about it, the risk would be higher than the reward. Like if I don't do this, then it's something, you know, X, Y, Z, I'm not going to get this or whatever. Use the tactic to fuel you to actually create the content, but know that just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you have to do it too. If you are not finding any enjoyment or contentment out of producing the piece of content, just because everybody else is, doesn't mean that you have to as well. You could find pleasure or you know excitement from different areas in your life, and it's okay to just consume. Um, I like to remind myself, like whatever my actual passion is, I'm putting my blinders on or whatever goal I'm working towards or whatever I want, like I am going to dial in and I'm not going to worry about what everybody else is doing because then that takes away from like what I'm trying to do. And it's the diverted focus that actually takes us away from like our like destination when we're like, oh, maybe I should do what they're doing or so-and-so has had success doing this. Maybe I should try and do that. So if you're feeling any animosity about oh, like I should do this because everybody else is doing it or I am scared because I don't want to put yourself out there. It all boils down to this. Three generations, or is it four generations from now, you will not be remembered. You, like they, there's studies shown that people can only remember up to so many generations and the things that you do ultimately only impact you and you only get one life okay when you boil it down like that it's so easy to just post whatever you want to post because ultimately the opinions of others is not going to impact you and one day you will be 80 years old right i love the 80 year old rule you'll be rocking in your rocking chair you'll be enjoying a little cup of tea and you'll think you know what i'm so glad that i did not allow the opinions of others to control and influence how i lived my life you only have one life and if you truly want to make content if you truly want to put it out there then do it nothing is stopping you i promise and it is not that scary post it close the app delete the app forget about it and then when you come back to it, be like, hey, that wasn't so bad. I did die. Even if nobody liked it, nobody interacted, you still put yourself out there. And that's a little baby step into building confidence. And I am so, so proud of you. Okay. So take it easy on yourself and just know that you are protected. You are safe. And no matter what piece of content that you put out there, we are on a floating rock. And one day nobody will remember what you had to say, right? Even with technology, like they say, oh, you know, like we have some a wealth of information, but even that, like Instagram went down the other day, like that's even so temperamental, right? So don't stress yourself out. It's just a funny little app to spend your time and don't let it stress you out, okay? Question, or I'm sorry, submission number two. I hate my current job, but I'm struggling to find a new one. Any tips for job hunting? Listen, the job economy right now is pretty rough. People are applying for jobs and there is a surplus of workers and not enough work, right? I think this really has to do with people having like that huge hiring and then now like they're laying a bunch of people off and the job pool has definitely shrunk as in like the jobs available, but the people applying for jobs, like it is definitely increased and this is due to changing technologies and you know restructuring of companies and right now in general like the economy is not doing too hot right so it can be really really hard to find a job but this does not mean that you are stuck at the job that you have right now forever i would definitely brush up on your linkedin and i also think with the reduced amount of jobs available it just means that you need to apply for more jobs than you thought you were going to be applying for and 
like it's going to take more job applications like sending them off um, to actually like secure that energy interview or to find that job hey i hope that you're enjoying today's podcast episode just a quick interruption to let you know that golden hour drip has a weekly newsletter that comes out this has bonus content weekly updates and future event information if you haven't already go down to the show notes click the link and join today now back to the show I would definitely recommend, like I said, getting your LinkedIn profile up ready, getting that like nice and good, um, change it to looking for work. If you're at your current role and worried about like other people seeing you look for your, like a new job, um, maybe be a little cautious about that. Um, it's also who you know and who you can connect with. And that means like your loose ties. Um, maybe connecting with some people that you haven't talked to for a while, calling them up and say, Hey, you know, I hope everything is well. Are you still working at XYZ? I'm currently looking for a job in this area of expertise. If you know of anything, will you please let me know or pass my name along? You never know who is going to bring you to your next opportunity and you never know who is going to like be able to link you or tie you to that other person so networking and connections are everything and also don't lose hope just because you are in this job right now does not mean that you have to be in this job forever and everything does work perfectly on the journey and the path that you're meant to take so i would ask myself like why am i currently in this role what is this teaching me? I think jobs are so great because it's literally like you are learning a skill on the behalf or the expense of the company, right? So if you get hired to do marketing, everything you learn in that job about marketing is going to go into your toolbox, okay, right? They cannot take your knowledge away. They cannot take your learning away. So to have that information and put it in your toolbox, then it's going to help you in your next job or your next career. So think of it as a learning opportunity. Soak up all the knowledge at the expense of the employer, right? It's not like school. You're not paying tuition. They're actually paying you to learn how to do your job correctly. Um, if you are in sales, networking as much as possible with other individuals, you yourself is a brand, right? Even if you never become an entrepreneur, you are your own brand, right? So like Logan Lee Miller, my expertise, my knowledge, my work ethic, everything that I am picking up and learning is going to stick with me through job to job. So building your reputation, learning as much as possible, networking as much as possible is a great ways to find that new career, that new job that is going to light you up, fill your cup and make you feel so, so happy. Also, um, if you do the easy apply on LinkedIn, follow up with a phone call. Say, call the office, be like, hey, I sent in my application through LinkedIn. I wanted to see if you got that. Can I set up an appointment to come in for an interview, right? Like doing that follow up. And because so many people like easy apply, messaging, job recruiters, those are all great ways to try and find a new job. So I wish you all the luck in your job hunting endeavors. Um, and I know that perfect opportunity is going to be right around the corner for you. Submission number three. I feel like I'm such a picky eater. I want to try new food, but don't like wasting my money if I don't like it. Who could blame a girl who just wants chicken tenders with fries? The only problem is I feel so childish when ordering it. Okay. Chicken, chicken strips with fries, that's not like my comfort food, but I get where you're coming from. Like it's easy to like pick something and stick with it. For me personally, I love a salmon Caesar salad. That's like my top go-to. Like I will order it if a restaurant is offering it, I'm ordering it because one, I'm getting a great source of protein, but it's not like too big of a meal where I feel like self-conscious about like eating it. And also I love homemade Caesar dressing. So that's like my go-to order. When you're thinking about like being like a quote unquote, like picky eater, I can see where you would be nervous to try new things and not like it. 
My tip for you is to find a friend who is a little bit more adventurous than you are. And I would go to suppers with her regularly. I would say, hey, you know, call her up, be like, you know, my bestie, hey bestie, I want to go out to eat on Thursday night. Will you come out to eat with me? I wanna try something new. Um, would you be okay like sp splitting entrees with me? Because then you get half of their food, right? You're like, okay, we're gonna split down the middle. Um, I'm gonna order chicken tenders and fries, and then you order, can we order something more elaborate, something that I would want to try? You're gonna split it half and a half. That way, you're introducing yourself to a new food, but then also you have your like, um, like nostalgic food that you're used to, your chicken strips. You're not wasting the food, right? It's half an entree, and your friends, you know, since they're adventurous, they're gonna be okay with splitting this. And then that way you can build up your food palette and you can try new foods without feeling like you wasted a bunch of money because your friend is there to eat the other half of the entree. Um, baby steps, I think our food um, and our, our like taste buds change as we age. So something that you might not have liked in the past, you are gonna like in the future. I know for me, I used to like not really like cottage cheese and tomatoes. This is, this is gonna sound crazy because it's literally one of my like go-to snacks. And I remember my mom liking cherry tomatoes and I would just like try the cherry tomato and think that it was like way too tart, way too acidic. I didn't understand how she could like them so much. And then like, and maybe hers were, no, I'm pretty sure they were grape tomatoes because she calls them cherry tomatoes, but I also call them cherry tomatoes, but they're grape tomatoes, right? Like they're grape tomatoes, they're not cherry tomatoes. Now I love it, I, I eat it nonstop. It is one of my favorite foods. And that is something that I know my cheese buds have changed because my mom would have like cottage cheese and tomatoes and she'd be like, do you want the rest of it? Like if she could only eat half of it. And as a kid, I'd be like, yeah, you know, I'm a grown girl. I would definitely finish it because you know, whatever your parents had was definitely better than whatever you were having, right? Like a mommy snack or, or whatnot. Um, and I, I love it now. And that's something that I didn't used to like. So your taste buds will change. Going out with a friend, splitting an entree would be a great way, but also just own your chicken strips, my girl. Like chicken strips are good. And if you like it and you know that you're going to like it, why not order it? We are not meant to go to restaurants and get food that we you know, don't like just because we want to be perceived by someone else in a more positive light. I think that if you love them and are okay with them, then have them. If you want to try new things, maybe try an appetizer that you've never had before or you know, do the half and half with your friend. Go to the grocery store try new recipes right like expand your taste buds and also make it fun like don't make it this thing where you feel like you're a child for eating the chicken strips or not feeling like you're ex like experimenting enough like make it fun make it an adventure because food is supposed to be fun it's not supposed to stress you out we're supposed to enjoy it and like it Maybe try a different sauce. Maybe that will, you know, spike your interest or something else chicken based because you are, you know, you like chicken. So maybe try a chicken sandwich or maybe try chicken breast. Like there are so many different options and I would just, I would give yourself grace because whoever you're eating with, right? Like whoever you are at dinner with obviously loves you, right? Like. They're going out to supper with you. They care for you, whether it's a friend, a family member, a significant other. The reason you are sharing a meal together is because they care for you and they like you. Um, so what? there's nothing to prove, right? Like if they already like you, they're not gonna worry about you ordering chicken strips with fries every single meal. That's part of your personality, that's you. And if they like you, they're not gonna care what you order for supper. If you want to get experimental, if you want to try new things, then make it fun and incorporate it. Um, and also a waste of money. Like you might not like it and you don't have to eat it, but that doesn't mean it's a waste. It means you tried and it didn't work out and that is never a waste. Experience is never a waste.
of money, time, energy. It's all meant for something. So good luck on your chicken strip endeavors. Um, and thank you to everyone who has submitted a, um, a question for Ask the Gals Friday. I love doing these episodes. Again, if you want to submit a submission, you can DM me on Instagram at goldenhourdrip. You can email me at goldenhourdrip at gmail.com. Um, or you can comment down below if you're on YouTube. I would love to hear any submission, any question that you might have, and they will always remain anonymous. So thank you so much for listening. Be sure to rate and review, subscribe, all the things, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.